I think uh, being boring is good for money. You want it to be stable and you want it to actually work. And Litecoin has worked like flawlessly over the past nine years. It takes forever to get anything kind of implemented on Bitcoin because um, consensus is slow. With Litecoin, if we want to do something, we can move pretty fast on it. What's up, YouTube? I'm your host, Giovanni, and I have the pleasure to be joined today by Charlie Lee, creator of Litecoin. Thanks for joining us, Charlie. Thanks for having me. In a previous interview, you define Litecoin as boring compared to other coins. Why do you think so? And do you see it as a plus or a minus? Um, well, I think it's, it's boring because people, well, people think it's boring because it's kind of very similar to Bitcoin. We don't do anything like crazy and anything um, very risky um, because I think we want to keep it um, like money, right? It should be stable. It should be uh, conservative. So because of that, uh, people think it's boring. I think um, the bad part about that is it's hard for us to attract developers because um, why would they want to work on Litecoin? They can work on Bitcoin or some other like more fancy coin that is doing crazy stuff. Um, but the good thing is, I think uh, being boring is good for money, right? Just like Bitcoin is, is conservative, you don't want money to be um, like taking risks, right? It's not, I, I don't think it's good to um, kind of take the approach of build fast and break things with, with money when you want it to be stable and you want it to actually work. And Litecoin has worked like flawlessly over the past nine years. So that's good. During our last interview, almost a year ago, you said that the fungibility and privacy were the main features that you wanted to improve in Litecoin and also that you would like to see as improved in Bitcoin. Uh, what achievement in this direction have been reached since then? Um, yeah, so I, I did mention that I think fungibility and privacy is one of like the, the main feature of good money that's missing in, in Bitcoin and Litecoin. And that's something I'm focused on right now. So what we're doing right now is um, we're working on adding Mimblewimble to, to Litecoin with, with extension blocks. And this is something we've been working on since uh, late last year. It's been, it's been going well. Um, we're targeting end of the summer for a, um, for a testnet launch. And if that goes well, then we'll, we'll launch it uh, soon after that and get it activated and deployed on Litecoin. You said that it will involve some risks related to the possibility of uh, hidden inflation. Can you explain exactly what these risks are? Yeah, so um, with the current way Bitcoin and Litecoin works, everything, the, the ledger is, is transparent, right? It's open to, for public to see. So you can, so you can see exactly how many coins um, exist, how many coins are mined every, every time a new block is created. So from, from that, you can see like, Bitcoin will have at most 21 million coins and Litecoin will have at most 84 million coins. The thing with uh, um, privacy coins is kind of the nature of privacy coins where uh, the amount of coins being transacted is hidden, right? So you can't tell how many coins someone holds. You can't tell um, using math and cryptography, you can kind of try to ensure that no coins are created out of thin air. But if there's a, a, a bug in a code or something wrong with the, um, with the crypto, then potentially there could be hidden inflation where someone actually creates coin out of thin air, like doubles their number of coins. And because no one can see the ledger, it's, it's not transparent, you can't easily tell that um, extra coins were created. So that's a risk with, with any um, private coins, Zcash, Monero, or Mimblewimble coins. Yeah, and so why do you think people will be willing to run this risk and use Litecoin's privacy feature? The reason why people would use something that has this inherent risk of hidden inflation is because the privacy is, is really important to people. And also, the way we're doing it, we're using extension blocks to, to implement Mimblewimble. So all the, um, the potential hidden inflation is uh, isolated in the extension blocks. So unless you're using the Mimblewimble extension blocks, you have no risk of your coins being um, having any hidden inflation. Uh, so I guess people will kind of take it slow, right? It'll take some time before people will trust that Mimblewimble is, is safe um, or the way we implement it is, is good enough. Um, so over time, as, as it becomes clear that there isn't any hidden inflation, 
people will start using it more. So basically what you mean is that uh, as long as this hidden inflation remains a possibility on the layer two, uh, that risk is not going to affect the, the whole layer one of Litecoin. Yeah, so the layer one of Litecoin, if you consider this layer one and layer two, right? So layer one of Litecoin is the main chain, which is transparent. When people move coins from the main chain to the extension blocks, they, um, it's a transaction. You can see people, it's, you can see them sending coins to a specific address associated with the Mimblewimble extension block. Um, so for that address will hold like all the balance on the Mimblewimble side. And then when someone withdraws or moves money from Mimblewimble back to the main chain, coins will come out of that address to uh, a transparent address on the, on the main chain. So all the potential issues with Mimblewimble is isolated to only the coins in the extension block. But uh, talking about what you just said, so that people are very much interested in privacy. I, are you sure though? Because uh, as far as I can see, um, a lot of people don't care about privacy that much. At the end of the day, people are all the time show, sharing stuff on the social, social media. Uh, it, it seems that privacy is not exactly the, um, the thing people are looking for the most. Don't you think that people are more concerned about other things like, for example, quickness in uh, transfers, comfort in making transfers instead of uh, having privacy? Yeah, um, so coins like Zcash and Monero, like probably two of the most uh, prominent privacy coins out there, they're not being used that much today because the, there's a lot of trade-offs, right? Trade-offs with user experience, um, mostly the trade-off with user experience, right? So people prefer something that's fast and easy to use over something that is uh, much harder to use, but that adds a little bit more privacy. Um, I probably agree that is the case. So we want to find a good um, kind of uh, trade-off where it's private and still easy to use, right? So that's what we're targeting. So if given that people would choose privacy over non-privacy, right? If the trade-offs are, uh, makes sense. Um, but I do, I do agree a lot of people are giving up their privacy willingly today uh, in social media, posting about all their personal information. Um, but I think over time people will, uh, will realize how important privacy is. I mean, we're starting to see, to see today where a lot of people are really against Facebook because of, uh, the misuse of your private information. Um, and I think this is even a lot more important with, with money. Right? You want your money to be, um, you want full control of your money. You don't want someone to, for a transaction, even today, right? If I send you some Litecoins, you can look at the uh, Block Explorer and see, potentially see how many Litecoins I have um, or where I got it from or where I spent Litecoins. And that's not, that's not good for, for money. In the crypto space, there are a lot of cryptocurrency leaders which are often promoting their own coins and criticizing Bitcoin. Others call themselves Bitcoin maximalists and see all other coins as shit coins. Conversely, you have been taking a far less conflictual approach. In a recent interview, you even said that before investing in Litecoin, people should first invest in Bitcoin. So what is the rationale behind this no conflict approach? Um, I, I've always thought that Bitcoin is Bitcoin is the king, king of crypto, right? So I think Bitcoin has the least amount of risk of it um, succeeding. Uh, so I think in terms of like investment portfolio, people should, should definitely invest in Bitcoin um, in the addition to Litecoin or whatever other coins they want to invest in. But Bitcoin is the safest of all cryptos, I think, for investment purposes. Um, so... I think Bitcoin is, so Litecoin, I think works hand in hand with Bitcoin. Um, I like to see um, both being used. I think they both work well together. Um, and that's kind of my, my approach to, to all of this. I just remember that on Twitter, you have this image of Vegeta and uh, Goku. So Goku would be Bitcoin and Vegeta would be Litecoin, right? Something like that, yeah. Vegeta will always try to best uh, Goku, but never succeed but they help each other out. Litecoin's main advantage compared with Bitcoin is higher transaction speed and lower costs. Other coins such as Bitcoin Cash are also betting on these characteristics. Uh, what is the competitive advantage of uh, Litecoin compared to Bitcoin Cash? 
Um, I think it's because we we follow more closely to the to the Bitcoin roadmap. I think a successful um, uh, form of uh, cryptocurrency or a form of money needs to be uh, decentralized and secure first and foremost. And that's that's our approach, right? It's important for for Litecoin, just like Bitcoin, to be decentralized and secure. Um, Bitcoin Cash is the security of Bitcoin Cash is nowhere near that of Litecoin because Bitcoin Cash's hash rate is dominated by Bitcoin. Um, so it's very easy for a small miner or a small uh, uh, Bitcoin pool to attack Bitcoin Cash. So the security is is not there. Uh, for Litecoin, Litecoin dominates the script mining uh, ecosystem. So the security is is really top notch, um, and uh, I think Litecoin aims to be more more decentralized, right? So one thing about Litecoin is is I'm still around. So because of that, it's it's less decentralized than Bitcoin. Um, but over time, I'm going to step step away and let Litecoin become more more decentralized. How do you measure these degrees of decentralization in this case? Uh... Uh, it, it's really hard to measure, um, but the thing with with Bitcoin Cash is basically they are doing like hard forks every every six months, or at least I think that's the schedule they're doing it. And in order to do that, it has to be very centralized. Right, some group of people, small group of people, are is making this decision about what to add to Bitcoin Cash, and that makes it very very centralized. You often point out that when you launched Litecoin, there was no pre-mining leading to a large amount of coins concentrating in a few hands. How do you think this feature is going to benefit Litecoin in the long, in the long run? Um, in the long run, when people use Bitcoin and Litecoin as, as money, it's important that the launch is fair, in my opinion. Right? It's not, you don't want to be using money that, uh, that enriches the, the, the rich. Right today, with uh, with it's kind of what's happening with with fiat currencies, right? So you want something that is that is fair. Um, everyone has their fair chance of of getting in, um, and I think that that would be good for the long term uh, for Litecoin. And you think that for Bitcoin, this is a fundamental flaw? Uh, no, I don't think it's a it's a flaw in Bitcoin. I mean, it is true that. Uh, Satoshi mined like quite a bit of coins initially, but just like same thing with Litecoin, people who got into Litecoin early were able to mine a lot more coins than people who get in today. Um, but I don't think with Bitcoin and Litecoin, I think they're both they're both fair, fair launches. So once the fungibility and privacy goal will be achieved, what is the next step in the evolution of Litecoin? Um, I don't think fungibility and privacy will ever be achieved. I think it's going to be a constant kind of battle to, for Litecoin and Bitcoin to become more private and more fungible um, because there's always trade-offs involved. Um, I honestly I haven't looked ahead past that because I don't think that's a battle that's, that's easily won. So you are, you are basically saying that uh, fungibility and privacy are going to be the battlefields you're going to be busy with for the long-term period and you don't have any other... Uh, interests or no, not interest but you, do, you don't have any other characteristic that you would like to implement into litecoin um so i mean there's there's quite a few things right so uh fungibility and privacy is important i think we'll always uh try to uh, have better ways to scale the coin right i think scalability is is also one of the trade-offs we had to make with with uh decentralization and security so trying to make uh, Litecoin, Bitcoin scale um, to billions of users. That's always a hard problem, right? Currently, does the way is to scale on-chain as much as you can with file sacrifice and decentralization, and then also scale on layer two solutions like Lightning Network. Um, and Mim Mimblewimble as extension blocks can also help things scale. Uh, the reason, one of the reasons why I chose uh, Mimblewimble over other privacy tech is because of the ability for it to scale, right? It does privacy and scales really well compared to other implementations like uh, Ring Signature with Monero or ZK Snarks with Zcash. Uh, Mimble Wimble scales the best. You said that you plan to step away from Litecoin as soon as it gets to a certain level of maturity. What are your plans for the future after that? What I mean by 
about stepping away, first of all, is uh, I think over time, so Litecoin right now um, works well with me around. So uh, that's one thing about the difference between Litecoin and Bitcoin, right? With, with someone like the creator around a coin, I can have a lot of influence over the coin and I, it, things can be more, um, more efficient right? Or th things can move faster. So with Bitcoin, it's, it takes forever to get anything kind of implemented on Bitcoin because um, consensus is slow. It's hard to achieve consensus on some certain things and hard, uh, slow to implement. But with Litecoin, if we want to do something, we can move pretty fast on it. Um, so that's, that's one of the benefits. But obviously, um, the the bad thing with a creator around is the creator has like more control, more influence over the project. So if it's kind of like the benevolent dictator situation where if the dictator um, does something becomes evil, then the whole country or whole project uh, goes bad. Right. So, uh, but I think over time as Litecoin becomes more, more used, um, there's less reason for, for me to stick around. Right. I can potentially do more, more harm than good. And, when that time comes, I'm going to slowly like um, kind of give up my influence and, and get out of the picture. And I think that's uh, when that comes, like will become more decentralized and I think it'll be better for everyone. It came, it came to my mind the comparison with the MakerDAO Foundation. So the MakerDAO Foundation is also trying to gradually dissolve and give all the power to the MakerDAO community. So do you imagine a future like this for the uh, Litecoin Foundation? The Litecoin Foundation, I don't know specifically on MakerDAO, but a lot of uh, coin foundations hold a lot of their pre-mined coins. Um, and that's why they have like a lot of control. So the Litecoin Foundation doesn't hold any pre-mined coins, obviously. So um, its function is to uh, take donations and make money from partnership and merchandise sales and put that money all towards development of Litecoin and more adoption. So I think that's always a good uh, thing to have for a foundation to support adoption of, of, of Litecoin. So I don't think Litecoin Foundation is going to um, kind of dissolve over time. I actually want it to become stronger and do more for, for Litecoin. And uh, you, haven't, uh, you haven't told me what you plan to do once you gradually will step aside. If you have any plans for your future as an entrepreneur, as a, uh, as a technology entrepreneur, I don't think I'm going to do much else, anything outside of crypto. I think my whole, I'm going to be working on, on cryptocurrency for, for the rest of my life. Um, but if I step away from Litecoin, um, I think I'm still going to like work on stuff. I don't know what yet. Thanks a lot, uh, Charlie, for being with us. Yeah, thank you. That was Charlie Lee, founder at Litecoin. I'm Giovanni, your host. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Cointelegraph. Like, subscribe, and hodl.